Hello, today I want to talk about how to generate the speed power to the grid. If you want to use the simulator as I do, you find it under this address here www.escp.ch. A user's guide can be found on the YouTube here. This is the movie. Go there and have a check. Most generators connected to the grid are synchronous generators. Uh, synchronous generators consist of a rotor with a magnetic field. It's a DC field. Then we have a stator with three magnetic coils, which are turned 120 degrees against each other. The rotor with the magnetic field induces an AC voltage in the three stator coils and the rotation speed of the rotor is equal to the network frequency. That's why it's called a synchronous generator. Here we can see how this rotating rotor is inducing a sinusoidal waveform voltage in one of the three coils. Since there are three coils, there are also three waves in each one of the coils. Here we have a very strongly simplified model of the generator. It's one phase of the generator. We can do that because we assume that the generator is symmetric, so there is a symmetric load. So in fact here we have um, the voltage source and the voltage source is uh, proportional to the internal voltage of the generator. The inter internal voltage of the generator is a function of the S excitation DC current of the rotor coil. Then we have the coil impedance, then we may have a switch and we have a load. So we want to further simplify this model. There is no internal resistance anymore, it's just the coil. The coil impedance, which is an inductance, and then we have the load. Let's now see what happens on a machine, on a 300 MVA machine, 30 kV, if you gradually increase the load. Here is now my simplified synchronous generator model. It's just one phase. So per phase I would have a voltage of 24.5 kV. Then I would have the coil inductance and I would have the load. Remember that the source is the induced voltage of the generator and the induced voltage of the generator is not equal to the voltage seen at the terminal of the generator if there is a load. So I run the simulation. What you see here is the voltage curve, the blue trace. It's the same as the output voltage because the load is very small at the moment. A small load means uh, high resistance. The green curve is the current through the resistance, through the load, and the red curve is the power at the load. So power positive with a load and negative at the source. So it's the same thing. Now I start to increase the load gradually. So I, redu I reduce the resistance of the load. And you can see now that the power at the load is increasing, so the red curve is increasing, but you see that also the current uh, is increasing. And also see at the same time that the voltage, this blue curve now, starts to deviate from the voltage at the source. So the voltage at the terminal of the generator starts to deviate from the induced voltage in the generator. And the reason is that this uh, series inductance here starts to play now. And as I continue to increase my load, you can see that I start to further decrease the voltage of the generator. And this is exactly the moment where the automatic voltage control of the generator would start to sneak in now and start to increase the voltage so that the output voltage of the generator at the terminals would be equal or would stay equal to the nominal voltage of the generator. Otherwise, I will never be able to get the full power at the output of the generator. The generator voltage control will now start to increase the ma magnetic field of the rotor by increasing the DC current in the rotor. The source I have here now has a stiff frequency of 50 Hz. A real generator, of course, would now be slowed down by the load, so the frequency would be decreased. Therefore, I will change now to a little bit more sophisticated model. I change now from a voltage source model to a generator model, and I would put the maximum power of my generator to 110 megawatt per phase. I would click on the droop, so this is a speed control of the generator, otherwise it's difficult to control by hand. And in order to get 100 megawatt output of the generator as per nominal, 
I need to have a 3 ohm resistance which result into a 100 megawatt load. Let's see what happens now. So I have to increase the torque on the generator, otherwise it gets slowed down. So the torque has been increased. And I have also controlled my voltage so that at the load I have a 24.5 kV. So now I'm pretty close to 100 megawatt, as you can see here. So if I am on megawatt, on 100 megawatt now, frequency is now very close to nominal 50 Hz. What you can see now is that the induced voltage of the generator is much, much higher than the nominal output voltage of 24.5 kV. So, and this is now performed by the generator control. So important in order to be able to control and adjust the load of the generator, you need two things. First of all, you do need a controller for the speed of the generator at torque control. This is what I have here. And I need at the same time also a voltage control of the generator. And only if these two things are available, I can control the power output of a generator. So if with this generator, I want to have a 100 megawatt output, I need to have an internal induced voltage of 58.3 kilovolt peak, which is uh, more than double the nominal peak output. And this increase is performed by the generator voltage control. And I need to have a torque control so that the generator stays on 50 Hertz despite of 100 megawatt output. On my generator, I need to have an automatic torque control and an automatic voltage control. Now I want to see what happens if I replace my load, my resistance, by an infinitely stiff bus, a stiff grid, which does two things. First of all, the frequency is 50 Hertz and will stay there independently of what the generator supplies. And the second thing is that the stiff grid also delivers the nominal voltage independently of the voltage of the generator. I have now replaced my resistance by stiff grid. And the difference between the stiff grid is there is no power. The power is infinite. The frequency is uh, constant 50 Hertz. Whereas my generator, of course, still is in generation mode, has a droop and has a nominal power output. So again, this is a 100 megawatt per phase machine. And uh, you see that as long as I have very little torque, both voltages at the generator and the stiff grid voltage are basically equal or on each other. And the red curve is, of course, the power. As soon as I start to increase the torque, the generator would now start to generate. You would see that the power goes negative. That means I deliver power to the grid. This is negative. And you can see now that both voltage curves, the induced voltage curve of the generator and the voltage curve of the stiff grid start to deviate from so for each other. There is a phase shift. And this is exactly what would happen if you have to deliver power from a generator to a grid. You will get a phase shift between two voltages. This is how you control power from the generator to the grid. You can operate the synchronous machine as a generator or if you reverse the torque in the other direction, you get it operating as a motor. And you see that there is always a little bit oscillation. So the torque controls tries to adjust the speed of the generator. So the more I increase the torque on the generator, the higher the phase shift between the grid voltage and the induced voltage of the generator will be. I increase the torque until the phase shift or the phase angle between two voltages is reaching 90 degrees. And at 90 degrees, I have the maximum power. More is not possible. And if I pass 90 degrees, I lose synchronism, which is a very difficult and dangerous situation for the generator. So just to repeat, so far we have not touched the voltage control of the generator. I can get the power output by increasing the torque on the generator. Then I have this phase angle between the induced voltage of the generator and the stiff grid. And the formula is here. So the power I can get is proportional to the sinus of this angle. 
and uh, if I do not touch the voltage control, in this case, in this arrangement, I can get per phase a maximum of 44.5 megawatt. However, since the machine is a 300 megawatt uh, generator, I would per phase at least be able to achieve 100 megawatt. So I need to control not only the torque, but also the induced voltage in the generator. So you see, now I'm more or less close to 90 degrees phase shift, but without voltage control, the maximum I get is around about 50 megawatt. I have to be careful not to lose synchronism here. But now if I start to control also the induced voltage of the generator, you can see that I increase, I decrease the phase angle between both voltages. That means that I can continue to increase the torque without losing synchronism. So I increase the torque and by that I increase again the power output. And if I want to be close now to these 100 megawatt I wanted to achieve, I have to continue to run about 58 kilovolt induced voltage in the generator. Then I can most probably achieve these 100 megawatt per phase, which would then be the nominal output. So you see, I'm there now. This is how it works. So this is what we have now done. We have increased the phase angle between the two voltages, but also we have increased the source voltage of the generator, means the induced voltage at the generator, but still the output voltage of the generator is nominal. So there is a big gap between the induced voltage and the nominal output of the generator, and this uh, voltage is basically used inside the generator by the inductance of the generator. So this slide concludes now the lesson of the generator itself. So the real power, it's always we talk about real power, the real power delivery of the generator is a function of both the rotor angle and the internal induced voltage of the generator. And the internal voltage is established by means of a controller for the excitation current of the generator rotor coil. As usual, you can go to the simulator and uh, build the case and try it yourself so you get some hands-on experience. That's good for learning practice.